Welcome everybody. Um, welcome to the uh, seminar series on trustworthiness, reliability and material science for aircraft structures. This is uh, top five aircraft composite repair fundamentals to structural health monitoring. My name is An Andrew Ang and I'll be the moderator for today. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to respectfully acknowledge uh, uh, the Wundry people on which um, Swinburne South, Swinburne's campuses are located. We honour and recognise our connection with the Wundry people's culture, history, and um, we and acknowledge, we pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. Please allow me to um, introduce today's speaker, Professor Alan Lau. Professor Alan Lau is Swinburne's Pro Vice Chancellor for International and Digital Research. Prior to this appointment, he was uh, appointed as Alex Wong G and Gigi Wong Professor in Product Design Engineering and the Associate Dean for Industrial Relations in the Faculty of Engineering at Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Professor Allen has received numerous research and teaching awards since 2002. He has published articles that have re received citations over 22,000 times and has a H index of 72. He's an academician of the European Academy of Science and Art and a fellow of many professional organizations. In 2019, he was named as Austrian's research team leader in composite material. Today, we are very honored to hear Professor Alan Lau, who will provide an overview on the applications of composites for different engineering sectors, as well as the key factors that affect the quality of the composite repair, including the structural health monitoring of composite structures after being repaired. Over to you, Professor Alan Lau. Okay, thank, you. thank you very much. Um, before I start, I'll just try to share the screen first. Um, let me see here and here. Oh, okay, just make sure all of you can see my PowerPoint. Can you see my PowerPoint here? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. And my name is Alan, and um, I'm the provider chancellor of the Swinburne University of Technologies. And uh, my role basically is to look after the international research partnership and developments, uh, ranking strategies, and also the uh, some sort of the strategy to push our research performance uh, 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 performance uh, capability as well. Um, I worked in Hong Kong for 20 years uh, before I moved to Australia and um, all along my life journey, basically my research focus on the aviation composite materials as well as the product design and analysis. So today I would like to focus on the effort composite repairs from the fundamental issue to uh, the possible structural health monitoring. So before I start, uh, let me introduce, uh, give you a, I introduce you one minute uh, prop, uh, uh, videos about our university research. World class research is about ideas that solve the problems that face our society, creating solutions that change the world and further advancements. Swinburne University has an international reputation for quality research that connects science and technology with business and the community. We are consistently highly ranked in the most prestigious rankings of world universities. Our researchers foster extensive national and international academic networks and connections with industry. It's the perfect choice for undertaking a high quality research degree. Our research has produced numerous scientific, technological and innovative breakthroughs. We have produced technology for highly efficient solar cells, for everlasting batteries and for extremely high capacity data storage, just to name a few. Many of our graduates leave Swinburne to go on to successful international careers in academia and industry. Swinburne's research future is bright. If you wish to speak with us and engage with our researchers, please contact us research at swin.edu.au or visit our website. Basically, these are only very short videos and introduce to you about our capabilities. And as mentioned in the video, in basically Swinburne, our research is unlike the other universities. We are not simply focused on numbers. We are more focused on our research impact. So we have a lot of research projects basically working with the industry 
And uh, our vision is to apply our technologies to help the industry to grow. So now let me show you about this Australia and uh, where's the Swinburne and uh, here's Melbourne and uh, Swinburne main campus is in location in Hawthorne and you will see there's a top view okay, of uh, Swinburne and I'm sitting here and uh, somewhere here and this floor and uh, inside the Swinburne basically we also have our uh, uh, train st stations and a lot of base, a lot of students they are studying in in Swinburne. Basically, they do not need to buy any vehicles because uh, they can directly get a train to go anywhere, particularly go to the city. That's a less than ten minutes. It's a very, very convenient. In our university, we have seven schools and twenty one departments. And uh, more remarkable is uh, our rankings uh, have been improved very quick. Okay, in the, uh, since uh, four years, uh, since uh, two thousand six. And now so our ranking, we are we are we have been ranked about 267, and last year we were the 369. Okay, we have improved about 98 places within a year, and even QS ranking, uh, uh when the time and joins women, that was four years ago, we are beyond outside the 600, but now we are 321 because uh, we have a lot of uh, right strategy uh introduced into our university, and also we have a lot of very good researchers. We are collectively working well, well together to support our research. So as I mentioned, we have a uh, seven school. OK, basically it's under three cluster, namely schools, uh, science, engineering and technologies, health, art and design, and also the this uh, business and law. And when you look at um, our university, we have a lot of key research areas, namely aviation, nanofabrications, energy, uh, data science, civil engineering, service engineering, artificial intelligence, and robotics, and um, all are very uh, important area now. Okay, in the engineering industry, and in our university, we have our very mature ecosystems. Like we have our key capability is that we have innovation presence. We have a digital innovation capability platforms. We have factory for the, of the futures. We have a different research center and school to support our research. And on top, OK, we have a free friendship research area that's very relevant to our composite materials. These areas are space and aerospace technologies, innovative planners, and also the medical technologies. And all this also used to support our clusters. And then on top, we have a set of six research institutes, namely data science, health innovations, smart cities, social innovations, manufacturing futures, space technology and industry. So all of them are work together. Now doing research, we cannot just talking about single discipline. Basically, we talk about cross disciplinary work. So all these research institutes are working closely with our clusters and then to support a lot of different kind of um, uh, important research areas like cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, uh, smart living environment, uh, space and satellite technologies. We develop a lot of partnership with European countries and uh, to look at how we can support our space technologies and also that uh, develop a small satellite. 3D printing is one of the key area for composite material now. In the past, they're more important in metal than go to, uh, and to go to metal polymer, but now it's a composite. Advanced coding technology is also one of the very, very important areas that uh, uh, in our university because of any, any kind of the new structures we need to make sure that the coding is good okay will not be affected will not be the uh that uh, by the environmental uh, stuff so this is also one of the key areas we are pushing quite a lot so in our university we also we are we are we have been supported by a lot of world-class enterprise so name is adobe uh, adobe um siemens amazon and uh we are conjunctionized so all these are used to support our digital uh, 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 related research. And um, they also have their, um, their station inside our university to, sub to, to bring our researchers and work with the industrialists together. So I just I mentioned about the three research, uh, French, uh, friendship research areas, namely space, aerospace technologies, medical technologies, and innovative patterns. And what is that? Okay, for the first one, is talking about the ultimate goal is to develop the EV toll, the electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. Inside this are small vehicle. We are talking about how to make the structure lighter. That is a composite materials. How to make it green, more green. Then we are using the 
the hydrogen uh, 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 to power the whole EV tow. Then we also develop the hydrogen technology, hydrogen tank that is using carbon fiber to make it, a carbon fiber composite to make it. And uh, this is our, our, our goal that's, um, to have a trial within a 18 months under our air hub projects. For the second one, the medical technologies, we are, this is one of the example, we have a college design helmet and this is a helmet to, me to, to me measure the signal from our brain and then use this signal to control the wheelchair without physically uh, moving any kind of the control stick and the wheelchair will be moving forward, backward, turn left and right according to your brain signals. So this is a, one of the very important technologies and what we call is that we are trying to develop technology for assessive device for LDD or for different kind of patients. For the innovative panels that is talking about hydrogens, and we start talking about the, how to produce hydrogens from different sources, wastewater, and uh, how to store hydrogens, how to use the hydrogens. And one of the ultimate goal is to develop, uh, to, to build a hydrogen refueler, refueling stations in Victoria. And uh, we are now working with a lot of different uh, stakeholders and uh, including the, uh, like the um, uh, universities and also the private company and the government as well. And because this is not a small project, this is quite a big project. And we also anticipate the referring station will be uh, uh, established, will be, will be constructed over within a year. So all of this supported by our digital digital technologies. We, we are namely called the this, uh, Industry 4.0 platform developed by this Swinburne. So back to the topic today, okay, composite materials. So um, my research area related to composites basically can be classified into four areas, smart composites, bio composites, nano composites, and also how to use a composite to repair or to strengthen the infrastructures. So basically that one is, uh, I started that one more than 25 years ago and uh, my PhD was in civil engineering. And then afterward, I start to work on the other areas. So going back to the, uh, my research related to aircraft and aerospace composite. And it's the difference, okay? When you talk about the aircraft and aerospace composite, it's a very, very, very different compared with composite material used for domestic products for the spot good, spotty good. The reason is that we have to consider a lot of environmental effects. For example, low temperatures, low pressures, high velocity for the, 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 the small particle inside the space environment can hit this satellite, hit this base vehicle, and to, to cause a serious damage because the particle is very small, but the speed is talking about uh, 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 supersonics, okay, several times of supersonic, mesh five, mesh six, and it's already high enough, and it is a high energy, uh, high enough to have an energy to penetrate our structures. And all of this inform all of these are uh, of condition we have to consider when the time we develop the structure for space vehicle. So when you look at this diagram, um, my research area basically focus on cryogenic environment, uh, UV attack, okay, on the, onto the uh, composite materials. Repair, okay, is a one of the very key topics, okay, for new aircraft, okay, deployability. That is talking about the new satellite, okay, the space vehicle. And basically, people try to use the strict memory materials to build uh, something like the hinge nets, okay, uh, structures. Multifunctionality, including the sensor and actuator that we may talk about this later, talk about smart structures. And uh, atomic, uh, atomic oxygen, okay, a tap, that is talking about because composite is made by the polymer, and polymer basically have a hydrogen and uh, oxygen elements. And sometimes this material will be degrade in the space environment. And I'm working, uh, this is one of the projects I'm working with Canada and also the one of the universities in China. And we discovered that even we put the nanoparticle into the composite materials, it will be degraded, okay, gradually. But it depends on how long, okay, what, how to control the particles put inside the composite materials. And then all the other, uh, we are quite interested to collaborate with different uh, uh, institutions or the uh, the uh, the public research organization to, to see how we can control the damage of the structures and people try to use a nanotube to develop the impact resistant uh, structures okay for space vehicle our guessing you know, we have to rely on the surface coating and this is uh, one of the very important issue because of the material will be uh, going away to get the atom will be going away from the surface of the structures and then what, how we can develop a very good secure coating Okay, on the surface of our composite. 
that is one of the key areas. So for the aircraft, back to the aircraft, basically we will talk about the uh, three types of material. One is a metal, one is the advanced composite, one is the aerospace composite. But I'm not going to talk about this one because it is a more, more high end and um, not um, this uh, composite may not be able to be developed okay, uh, within one university, it have to be a collective effort. In some countries, they have a build a the space center, they okay, focus on that because they have to have all this environmental control within the laboratories, to making sure that they can they can they can provide the the, the five tests go up to three thousand five hundred cells uh, degree Celsius, okay, to making sure that your structure is still safe. So this is not our topic today, but we are focusing on the advanced composite, mainly talking about the ceramic, uh, metal, polymer, and natural fibers. These two are more common, okay, uh, uh, for, for use uh, being used for the aircraft structures. This one mainly for the um, turbine aircraft engine because of high temperature resistance. And what's the composite material? It's a very simple. It's a fabric mixing with the polymer. We can say it as a goo, okay, from the name and terms. After it's dry, it becomes a very strong material. So what's the purpose for this material? Fabrics provide strength to the composite. So we have to use a very high strength material to make a fabric. Now is a more common is carbon, glass, uh, pyramid, uh, 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 basal fibers, and now the people start to use it. Natural fiber is also people try to use it, but may not be able to use the, uh, the primary structures because um, their string is not up to that standards, okay, that level. But carbon is a, one of the very common type of fibers to be used for aircraft structures. But hybrid is still fine, glass and carbon mixed together. But for the resin, the purpose is to maintain the shape of the composites, to absorb the energies because the fiber, the fiber, the fiber are too strong and relatively brittle. So under the impact uh, uh, loading, then it may be easy to break the fiber. So basically the resins can absorb all the energy to avoid the damage to the fiber. And then the, the most important is that the resin can transfer the stress from the metric to the high string fiber. And after they form together, we will form, we'll form a very high string and lightweight composite materials after curing. And the curing we're talking about is 24 hours in general, but depending on the uh, what polymer you use, okay, thermal passive or thermal set. And thermal set is a common type okay, of resin used for aircraft, but now it's a more tendency to go to the thermal plastics. So the research, the recent research and application of advanced composite material basically can be classified into nine types. One is using composite to repair the civil infrastructures. One is talking about how to develop a the composite materials, including the plant-based or animal-based composite. Uh, composite. The other one is uh, more focused, people more focused recently is to uh, develop the lightweight structure for EV tow. Uh, 3D printing is an important area now, and um, we are not just talking about the printer. I just mentioned not just mentioned about printing the metal or polymer. We are print, we also try to make a nano particle with polymer to make a new nano composite materials. Or uh, we are still talking about the 3D printing for composite, but during the process we may introduce some nano particle during the during the whole uh, po uh, processing uh, processing line, and then to make the new functional composite materials. Nano composite materials that uh, have been there for over 15 to 15 years and. Uh, starting from the carbon nanon chip, nanon clay, and then now the graphene. Energy composite is talking about how to make the composite itself can store energy, uh, capture energy, and um, it's like a battery, and also the structural components. Composite automation is in other um, big areas. The reason is a, now the travel ban okay, in anywhere, and if we can produce Manufacturing composite material by automation technologies, technique. We may be able to control okay, the, the whole process in Australia, but the manufacturing hub is other country. So this is what we call the industry 4.0 concept. And this is also one of the big areas, but the investment is also huge. Hydrogen tanks are another big areas. Now all countries are working on that, including Australia. And then go to the last one would be comp aircraft composite structures. So this is um, as the topic what we would like to talk today. 
for the composite material now there are a lot of people that are focusing on the how to develop the structures with the cell healing uh, capability we put the sensor in the composite uh, adaptive response we put the actuators uh, multifunctional uh, make the structure the more electrical and thermal conduct conductive particularly for the uh, uh, composite aircraft because uh, the aircraft it needs to be conductive but otherwise got trouble during thunderstorm and uh, energy storage is another big area. There's uh, many designs for the unmanned air rig or small rig or can fly longer distance, but it has to capture energy by itself. Okay, rather we just carry the, the battery because battery is very heavy. And uh, input the mechanical performance. All these areas are very common. Okay, so many researchers are working in this area. But the problem is that still a lot of new areas, there's still not too many people working on it. Number one is how we can recycle the composite material. This is a major problem, major hurdle um, that we see the industry to use composite material. How do we repair the composite? Remember, I mentioned about the repair, okay, the curing time for the resin is about 24 hours. The aircraft, basically, the aircraft is not able, is not allowed to, to, to land, okay, for more than 24 hours just for repair a patch. Okay, only a few minutes we have to finish all the repair process and the aircraft have, have to go. Because uh, when the aircraft landing okay, on the runway, they lose money. The aircraft only earn money is on the, on the air. So how we can develop a good repair skill scheme okay, for the existing composite aircraft, that is key. How to detect, de uh, determine, uh, determine or detect the failure, whether we can weld the composite or the light the metal. Okay, fast curing resin, as I mentioned already. So these five area basically are the important area for the industry, not only for research, but for the industry. And what we can solve all this problem, basically using composite material, have no any problem at all uh, about the industry. Because uh, we have to compare the traditional metal structure and also now the new composite material. So you have to compare the pros and cons. Why do people still want to use metal and not use composite? Because all these five areas are very important. So the using composite material can save a lot of weight. When you look at this diagram, this is a traditional aircraft structures. This is a new composite structures. A lot of people will think about the um, the uh, the only primary advantage is the weight for the composite as compared with metal. Okay, a specific string to weight ratio for composite is much better than metal. It's true, but the other uh, factor is all this are vivid. The vivid, okay, the, the fastness actually is one fastness is very light, okay, but you can you can you can imagine how many pieces of this fasten to be used for the metal aircraft. It's huge. Talk about several thousands, and all this fasten put together that would be very heavy. But for the composite material, we can minimize the use of fasten because all made by glue. They are born all their things together. Um, glue is a common term, but normally we use it adhesive. They bought all these uh, structure together to minimize the use of this kind of vivid. Of course, some of the structures we still have to use, but we can quickly minimize. That means we can reduce the weight, not only on the raw material itself, but also from the fasteners. And using composite material is a, is a lot of a good advantage. For example, you also look at this diagram as make the whole structure easier, simpler. Unlike the traditional metal one, you have to put a lot of different uh, stringer, um, a stiffness, a stiffener, and then put on the red and then top and bottom uh, bar. But it's very complicated. But for the composite material, we can do by one molding process. But of course, uh, for the R and D process, it will take longer. I remember when I when I worked in South a long time ago, we already start to think about how to develop okay these kind of structures and this bending, but uh, the, 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 uh, this are. Uh, uh, Connection point is a more critical. How can making sure that the bonding is good? But the reality is it's lighter, simpler, and then we can minimize the use of these fasteners. Remember, this fasteners is not at all, all of them made by light, lightweight material. Some of them made by the standard steel, even some high string standard steel, they are quite heavy. And we can, if we can minimize the use of this one, we can reduce the weight for the aircraft and thus reduce the fuel use. So there's a lot of structure you will see that using composite material already. But of course, uh, um, when you, we are talking about, when we're talking with the aircraft uh, manufacturer, okay, everybody understand this, but how we can transfer this kind of technology to the local SME, that might be a different story because they might have to reinvent 
their facility tooling and uh, skill set okay to make to convert the traditional metal uh, uh, products uh, uh, manufacturing process go to the new composite manufacturing process so it is it's high depend it take time to uh, actually not say that we educate but we have to let them understand the advantage and the investment okay when they can get the return back okay after several years so the other problem is of damage Composite for the metal damage is so simple. Okay, everybody know about what is the damage for, for metal. But for the composite material, it's a little bit different. Okay, they got a cracking, they got a delamination, deboning, and uh, even to some high speed. Okay, impact, ballistics, penetrations, micro voice, and interlaminate shears crack. So from the top, okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, this basically could be okay caused by the overloader, okay, foreign object uh, uh, impact. But for this tool, mostly it's caused by the manufacturing process. So it means that we cannot control well during the whole manufacturing process. And the most important is that when you look at this diagram on the surface, very nice, very nice. But inside there's so many voids. And this one is also the same. So how we can detect the damage, this is also another big topic. Composite is another metal. Metal we can we have a lot, lot of ways okay, to 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 detect damage. Okay. Uh, 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 magnetic interference, uh, infrared, and uh, everything. Uh, because those materials are conductive, but mm, composite is not. Okay. And then how we can detect damage? And the most important is that you may not be able to see the damage on the surface. That is a problem. For example, this one is very nice. You can see the crack, but if there's a painting on the surface, you can't see because uh, uh, the painting will cover the crack. Okay, and that is the reason why the, we also structural health monitoring or NDT for composite is still a one of the very hot topic. Okay, even they start for more than 10 years, but now still a, a hot topic because we cannot, okay, uh, we do not allow to get if the aircraft got the damage like this, okay, inside the fuselage. So it does, it does it on, 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 on the skin of the fuselage. And um, and if there's damage you cannot detect earlier, it will cause a serious problem okay, later, a big accident. So uh, we can we can take uh, the, the composite repair concrete structures as, as an example, okay, to see the what is good bonding, what is a bad bonding, uh, poor bonding. So when you look at all these diagrams, the using composite to repair the concrete structure have been there for 20 years. Okay, I remember the first few years was a lot of, were a lot of problem uh, because of the bonding is no good and uh, cannot get the very strong bonding between the composite material and the concrete. So when you look at all this, okay, this one of good bonding because the damage basically is in the composite itself. They are bonded very well. There's even there's a, so many cracks on the surface of the uh, on a, uh, in the in the concrete bar or beam. And this failure actually the, this the the composite okay and hits very well, well, well with the concrete and the crack is inside the concrete. It's good, but the poor bonding basically like this one. We got the debonding okay. And, uh, this may be due to the high shear stress or peel off, and also the inter inter uh, interlayer cracking, shear cracking, okay, in between the composite and the concrete surface. So all these are very, uh, it's a, a service cases because for this one, you can see the damage. For this one, you cannot see on the surface. And mostly, okay, people, how they solve the problem, they just put the anchor uh, the, uh, mechanism on the, on the, at the end of composite material. So they may put a ball, uh, the, the bolt, okay, to bond, to secure the prey end, okay, on, to, on inside the uh, inside the concrete. So these are uh, all these kind of things introduce uh, uh, um, initiates a lot of study about why this happened, how to uh, avoid the the crack, okay, or not crack the bone at the bone end of the composite prey. So for the individual aircraft, okay, basically we have to start to look at the, how we can uh, we can uh, we can develop better composite material to avoid damage. So actually, it's separate into three le three different level. The one is they're talking about the fiber level. That is a bonding mechanism between the fiber and matrix. The second one is talking about the composite plate level. 
that is a delamination inside the composite. This tool, okay, if there's a damage, it's still acceptable okay, at the early stage because um, it depends on the how serious of the damage. But the worst case is this one, the bone. If you if you bone the patch you get on the surface of the aircraft, if the bone has happened, it's totally affect the whole structural performance of the aircraft. So that is something that what we don't want to see. Okay, this too sometimes you cannot avoid because there's no hundred percent okay perfect okay uh, uh, a composite material, no single void, and um and um but for the debon is basically it's a big problem. Debon is talking about like this one, the whole things okay, the whole plate debon, and then be sure that this beam would be totally it would be uh uh, uh cracking into two pieces, breaking into two pieces immediately. So that's the reason why when the time we look at the, the different level okay, of work, then mostly for the researcher, they're focused on this tool. For engineer, they're focused on this. And that is the reason why they, some of the engineers try to put the anchoring device, okay, like the boat, to make sure that there's no debug at the end. But there is not a perfect solution. The perfect solution is we need to have a very good bonding between the composite and the substrate. So by looking at the transitional repair scheme, okay, um, I worked in this area for four years when I, after I finished my high school, okay, I was a craft appendage and to do the composite repair. And I still remember that at that time we have to drill a lot of hole on the repair patch. And um, then we bond it on the surface, use a wave to get to put it in place. And what happened is a uh, still a lot of stress constraints, okay, if you are not doing well. Because of when the time you put the vivid okay on this into the composite patch and then go into the structures. If you do not do well, you will impose a lot of residual, residual stress at the whole the, 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 the surrounding area of the of the rivet. And that is introduced something like the crack okay along all the rivet hold. It's like a stem, okay, you can so many hold then you can tear off easily. But for the composite patch, okay, it's much easier and then they put all the adhesive in between layer. This one adhesive also try to close the cracks as well. So according to the um uh, the uh, the result from different researchers, basically the crack propagation rate okay, for the composite repair is much lower. If there's a crack inside, it's much lower than the uh, uh, metal repair scheme. We are by by um the metal repair by using the transitional scheme. And uh, and also the, when you look at the the, the problem is say now we say for composite repair, high stress concentration at the bone end I will talk about is in the in the next slide and this is one of the very critical issue. Skill is another big issue. A lot of people do are working in the aircraft maintenance uh, uh, areas. They they are very familiar about this repair scheme, but what they go to composite material is a total difference. Uh, the most important is uh, how to ensure the quality. We do not allow any void, okay, in between the bond, and then we also do not want to have any any water particle or moisture, okay, will get into it. Remember when the aircraft quite flying on the sky, what is the temperature? It's minus fifty six degrees Celsius. If any moisture could okay, get into the bond area, it will become an like ice, and then what happens is that the volume increase and generate the crack, and then this bond will be deformed very quick. So that is the reason why we have to educate people about when the time you do the composite repair, there's a lot of things that they have to uh, uh, follow, a lot of regulation, a lot of process, uh, uh, precaution process they have to follow, but not all the frontline people they understand. So how do we educate them? That is a one of the key issues. I, I did provide the training in, um, in the Hong Kong Aircraft Engine Company a long time ago, but at that time the composite tool, a lot of people still was still very new. Processing time is another problem. Okay, that's the reason why I mentioned about fast curing resins is one of the big areas that we have to uh, look into because of the, if curing take too long, no, no any engineering industry they would like to use a composite material, composite material because um, they they cannot wait for too long for this resin to be cured. So uh, as far as I remember, our team basically can develop the cure uh, the resins that can be cured within few minutes. But then it's go to another problem is say uh, the residual stress. 
So there's a lot, a lot of things that still we have to, to do in details and uh, to making sure that this residual stress will not introduce another kind of the problem. So uh, as I mentioned to you already, okay, for the composite repair, we need to control, okay, the um, the environment to get the um, uh, the environment con environmental con conditions. So now there's uh, something like portable clean uh, clean and close structure. Okay, they they put uh, the whole things on plate in the area that you want to do the repair and then to control all the pressure, then density, density and dust uh, dustness. Okay, but the problem is a not or the runway or not or the repair site the 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 the, the, the platform okay the four are so flat okay allow you to put the whole machine uh hold hold and close the chamber uh to the on to the uh on the, on the side of the aircraft okay this is only for demonstration but for the reality a lot of repair repair tasks actually are uh, done on the runway and the runway is not that very flat okay and depend on the country so what we do is that we actually we work with HECO to develop it, uh, what we call the enclosure chamber. And this chamber basically to control all the environmental conditions, pressure density, uh, and also the, the remove darkness, the UV resistance to avoid any damage for the repair during the repair process. So this is also one of the very good areas that we may be able to consider. Of course, this may not be a talking about composite material itself, it's talking about uh, how to develop a device to assist the composite repair. Because uh, on the top, okay, there's five elements, uh, five factors that are very important. So okay, they will affect the quality of bonding of a composite patch. And uh, in order to talk about composite patch, re patch repair, most important is a, this area, the patch end. A lot of, when they try to work in the hackle, I did not know why we had to make the end capper, okay? Until so I, I did my PhD, and then I realized because our taper end can reduce the shear, the maximum shear stress at this point. Uh, if you are not making taper, then the shear stress at the end point is very high, and will be easy to cause a crack stuff at this point. So sometimes it's very funny. It's a practical skill and also the uh, uh, academic academic knowledge. Once you combine together, then you understand why the engineer, they have to do it in this way. And I'm sure that even the somehow, okay, when you go to the front, to talk to the front line people, why we have to use a taper end patch. I mean, I'm not sure, I'm sure that not everybody can tell you about the, 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 the reasons. But when you go to do the research, and we understand that the girl, we try to reduce the shear stress at this end. And that is a very useful to avoid your peel off and shear failure at the end point. And um, this is all the uh, theoretical analysis, and you're also using finer elements to determine different property of the composite material actually would cause different stress level at the end point. And, um, and then uh, we have to, based on the result, to de design, okay, a right pattern, okay, fiber orientations, composites, okay, determine the right fiber orientations of the composites to avoid the high shear stress at the end point. So there's a lot of things that we can do. And uh, if we talk about this one, there's another hours, okay? But uh, just give you uh, some idea, okay? Basically for the composite repair, there's a lot of things that we have to consider and uh, particularly the, how to design the repair patch. And last few years, we also try to put the nanon particles into the adhesive in order to ensure the bond strength is, uh, uh, enhance the bond strength uh, uh, of the composite material. And we find out that, okay, uh, we put the quality carbon nanon chip with the epoxy and then to bond the uh, bond the two composite um, uh, plate together. Their uh, shear stress, okay, uh, the shear strength increase a lot, no matter it's a room temperature or low temperatures. We are more focused on low temperature because of the aircraft here. And this is also one of the new areas there's a lot of people now focusing on and uh, how to use a micro uh, multi water nano tube, quarter nano tube, or carbon black or diamond uh, particles. Okay, and uh, it it does help a lot. Okay, to enhance the shear strength. And the new area will be talking about the composite for the EV two, a man air recode, uh, cryogenic fuel tank, and hydrogen tank for the typical vehicle uh, EV for the 
a man area from the EV to or for buses. Okay, this is all our uh, our target areas. So back to the structural health monitoring. Okay, a lot of people not quite sure what is the SHM. Okay, basically it's like a human body. Okay, human body we have we got the nervous system, we have, we got the muscular systems, we got the brain, then we form a human. But for the aircraft, we also have a sensory system. We also have to have the what we call the brain. That is the uh, information processing unit. That is the central processing unit. And then when we detect any problem, then our for human, okay, muscular system would react, okay, to protect himself or herself. For the aircraft, they got the active control unit to avoid, okay, something happened. It's a very common, it's a talk about helicopter, okay, for the rotor brain. Basically, the rotor brain is very sensitive to the vibrations, but if there's two rotor, uh, two helicopter flying in parallel, no, or not in parallel, one in the front, one in the back, the generation for the vortex would introduce, okay, the vibration for the bread of the 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 the, the, the back in uh, the, the the helicopter on the back, and this vibration would close to the natural frequency of the brain, and then the brain would suddenly change, uh, the shape, okay, in order to shift its natural frequency, so to protect, okay, the helicopter is uh, fine and safe. So this is what we call the we got the sensor to measure the vibration frequency of the helicopter brain. But we also have an actual active control unit to change the property of the brain if the vibration is close to its natural frequencies. So this is what we call this mass structures. It's a it's a very hot topic since uh, 15 years ago, and now still a lot of people working along this area. And uh, of course, there's a lot of different S S M okay a, div a, a technique. Some are using the stream gauge, some using the embedded sensor, acoustic emissions, and frequency response technique. And for the passive one, that is a uh, uh, we have to use the device to detect okay the damage. So you will see this uh, acoustics okay this uh, ultrasonic uh, uh, detection technique, and then there is uh, also the the, the quite passive waiting for the crest formation and generate the sound, and then you can measure. Then you know there's a crack. This one you're, you're using infrared camera thermography. Okay, if infrared camera is more um, uh, a pulpit for composite material at this stage. Because why, well, as I mentioned to you, okay, you can't see the crack on the surface or damage on the surface on the surface. But if there's any debone, okay, or delamination inside the composite material, thermography is a one of the very fast technologies to detect, okay, to see okay, if there's any abnormal situations, okay, inside the composite, and then you go to that particular locations to do the check, okay, carefully. So for the composite repair concrete, now a, a lot of people to try to infrared, okay, to look at the any bond in this on the surface. So you see there's a defect, and basically you can see easily from the screen. So for the uh, uh, aircraft structures, a lot of people going uh, focus on using the embedded sensor technologies like the fiber optic sensors, and this sensor is a very simple. Is a you put a sensor in the composite material. One for optical fiber, you can put more than 50 to more than 50 sensors along only one fiber, and then you can separate a lot of different points. So you can give you some sort of array. Okay, so uh, there's mapping the mapping system, and you got all this kind of information. Then you measure the strength of the structure, and then you can determine about whether the structure is normal or it's got damage, because uh, there's a lot of mathematical model or computer simulation can tell you about what happened about the signal you receive and then what happened about the structures. And if you look at the uh, this is a fiber, uh, fi uh, optic, fi uh, fiber optic sensors and uh, early stage where we put it in between the composite and also the concrete surface. Compared to the string gauge, this is a string gauge, a surface mounted string gauge, this is a fiber optic sensor. And we also uh, measure that, okay, once we put the optic fiber sensor into this composite structure, it won't affect its mechanical property at all because it is a very, very small. It's only 125 micron in diameter. Uh, it's like you put another fiber reinforcement into a composite. It won't affect the, 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 the property. And the bonding property between the fiber and composite is very good because there's a glass. And what happened now is people using it is a, they put a lot of fiber optic sensor array along this Guangdong uh, Tower, Canon Tower, and uh, to measure the structural property of the whole tower, particularly under the high wind, 
conditions, windy conditions, and then because the tower will be swaying, and this sensor will give us all signal. For the pressure pressurized tank, okay, this is much better because for the sensor, there's only light, there's no electrical current go through. So it's very safe for any kind of the gas tank. And this array will tell you about what happened about the tank. And for the well structure, we also do put the sensor along the well structures and then to detect if there any crack okay, along the structures. This is uh, a wind turbine ray is uh, have been used in Europe already. Okay, um, they they measure the damage, they measure the conditions, and then go through the satellite. Okay, to get a signal, you can measure the health condition remotely. In Hong Kong, we also put the sensor under the bridge, and uh, along the bridge, there's uh, only one cent of the fiber is over 50 sensors. So this is uh, for the civil infrastructure. They use the sensor for a long time. This is a dam. Okay, uh, during the construction stage they put the sensor inside why we put the sensor inside because that we want to know about the health conditions during the construction process and then for the long term for the long term life inspection process so what you can see here is a uh the first day so they put the put all the concrete in you see the color red color means that the temperatures high temperatures and even after four days after the seven day one month still very hot Okay, inside the structures, but on the surface it start to cool down, but inside it's still very hot. So what happened is a uh, the outside surface try to contract, but the the core is tend to expand, and during this kind of a, of the process is generate a lot of crack. So that is the reason why this kind of a uh, uh, processing monitoring go to on a uh, 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 a life a uh, structural health monitoring are very important because you can keep monitoring about the condition of the whole structures. And if you don't tell other people you cannot emerge, it's take about six months to saturate, to saturate the temperatures inside the dam. Of course, for the aircraft, there's a still a lot of way to detect, de, de, uh, to detect, de, uh, detect the crack or damage of the structures. You can use a piezoelectric actuators and to generate the wave and then use a sensor to measure the wave. If there's a crack in between, then you can easy to know there's a, some sort of abnormal condition of the, in the structures. And you will see there's a lot of uh, 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 example. And for example, this one, they put the array, I get the sense, the one optic fiber sensor go to set up the array system and then to put on the leading edge. And if any damage, then all this sensor will give the signal. Then based on this signal, you can determine whether there's a damage, whether icing, okay, the ice attack on the surface or other problems. So all this is structural health, structural health routing for the aircraft is still quite new. And if we talk about repair, then would be would be a very new topic as well. And there's no any solution up to this stage. And because uh, we want to have a solution, but it's still too early. Even talking about the composite repair is still a new topic to a lot of people. So this is the end of my presentation. And um, basically in Swinburne, we have a uh, team of people working in different areas to support our composite research. And uh, some uh, on 3D printing, some on modeling, some on the CIVO, some on the impact mechanics. And I'm sure that we will be getting more and more people work together, particularly with the Chris team in the surface coding. If we talk about the satellite, the, the space structure, surface coding, I mentioned in the early, uh, early in my slide presentation, is very important. And I'm also looking forward to work with the, his team as well. Um, before ending, okay, just show to you about the, our university have a lot of new facilities to support our research work. Although today I'm talking about composite repair, but in reality, it would, we would tap into our industry 4.0 platform. And because we want to work with the different partners around the world and to share the data to develop new technologies, and the platform is very important. And uh, you will see this, uh, all these facilities, basically uh, a lot of things relate to material, a lot of things relate to data, and some are related to the, our hydrogen as well. So for the our test lab, this one is a composite automation laboratory. So the, um, inside this laboratory, basically all uh, all the equipment, does, all, 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 all the machine are controlled automatically. So we can control the machine in my office and now we do not need to go to there and the composite will be made by itself, okay? That is a very important and this funded by the government industry and also our universities. So thank you very much. Okay, this is um, the 
did there's some of the photo I captured, okay, uh, from the web about Melbourne, and uh, I'm sure that uh, some of the audience, uh, some of the uh, audience today is from overseas. You will see Australia is very nice, and particular Melbourne, and you will see there's a lot of little animal that you may not be able to see in your country. So welcome you to come to Melbourne and come to visit our our university, and here is a perfect place to visit, live, uh, life and work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan, for uh, the fantastic talk. Um, we are open now for questions. Please use the chat function to type in your questions. I will moderate this talk and I'll publish the questions when they come in. Um, Alan, you have one question from uh, Tom Patterson, uh, one of the postdocs uh, at scene. He says, thank you very much for the talk. It was very interesting. You mentioned that one of the issues with patch-based repair is the use of non-conductive materials. How big of an issue is this for aircraft repair and what kind, what sort of strategies are used to overcome this? So, yeah. Okay, uh, basically for the composite, for the aircraft, okay, we need the material, the surface is conductive because of lightning strike. And lightning strike is always is one of the most serious damage to the aircraft. But uh, because of the composite materials, their conductivity is not as high as metal. So now there's a lot of practical problem in um, all aircraft maintenance companies, how do we repair the lightning strike damage? And remember, when it's got the damage, you never know about where is the crack tip yep. is. The location of the crack tip is more important because of that is a all go to the interlaminate failure. So that's so that's the reason why if the composite uh, surface is conductive, then it can direct the current from the uh, starting point go to the another end point and go to the ground, okay? And then it will not damage the aircraft. So how to overcome it? Now there's a two way. One is a determine uh, design a very nice conductive coating, okay? Remember, as in uh, talking a nice, it's, it's, it's mean that you have the some sort of pattern, you have to make a color on the surface, and um, more expensive <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and uh, because the conductive a lot of people know about this will be this might involve a lot of metal particles and the weight is another issue okay and the other way to do it is that people try to put a carbon based nanoparticle into resin to make a new type of conductive resins and then to uh, tackle this problem but again it's still early stage the reason is a uh, the uniformity or dispersion property of these kind of nanoparticles into resin is often another problem. You can make it very nice in the lab, but once you go to the manufacturing process, that would be different. Yeah. If yeah, you try so to spray the nanoparticle on the PPS surface, that might be an exclusion to solve, but there's still a lot of people working on that. So, 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 yeah, this is this is also that's the second part of the question, and also a question that I also have always in my mind. You know, we use all these conductive uh, polymers, right? Electric conductive polymers, and it's been thoroughly explored with the, the composite uh, community. But can you comment on the sort of the expected life of these sensors? Because we, we use these sensors to predict the the <laughs> the, the uh, aircraft structure, right? but what about the expected life? Um, can you comment on it or, I, or, or provide I, some I, insights? I, I, I cannot comment. I can only give my... Uh, um, personal will is a uh, doing everything in the lab you can make it very perfect okay you can show the very nice result but we we really have to consider about the environmental conditions okay like the weather this kind of the uh, particle will be attached on the surface well 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 okay remember when the aircraft flying on the sky there's a lot of thermal thermal contraction thermal expansion all this kind of thermal issue and then also on the surface there's a heat Mm. Right, and with the aircraft flying, it says heat. Would this kind of thing would affect the measuring the, the, the accuracy of the measurement? Yep. Yeah. That is a, my dream is that we need to have a laboratory that is combine all this kind of then can consider all this factor and then to design new materials. Because our heating is one issue, abrasion, abrasions, okay, abrasive damage is a one issue because there's a lot of particles, okay, uh, on the on the air. And remember, most of the damage of the aircraft is on the landing. Because the runway, there's a lot of more sand, more rock with hit on the body, okay, hit the aircraft surface. And this will also cause a secondary damage. And 
And this is all this kind of factor we have to, 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 to pay attention on. And my advice is that no matter what kind of research for the aircraft, conductive or non-conductive, we, we need to talk to the frontline people. They know more practical in, uh, 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 situations. And then we have to bring this situation back to the laboratory to consider, okay? Rather, we just based on the book, based on the paper, and then we, we anticipate about the scenario. But sometimes it's not like that. A lot of people, they do not know about sense on, on the aircraft battery, the damage. Yep so serious because of the sand rolling from the front wheel yeah the front end gear and i i i think i think so uh i can't, I can't comment whether it's good or bad or whether it's it's really highly depends on the the strategy when the time you develop the coding or the nanoparticle composite nano composite material you have to go for all these kind of tests yeah yeah, yeah. And, and and also seek the frontline people's uh comments very important a lot of a lot of university um being criticized we are we are doing something that is not practical because we are dealing with the frontline people. We have to talk to them; they are more practical. They know exactly what happened. Yeah. So so um, uh, uh, there are a few more questions coming in. Um, so this is from um, Manes Pereza. The sorry if I pronounce your name wrongly. Uh, the question is: um, Does selection of the fiber? Or the resin affect the repair process? Can you comment on that? And also, um, how do you actually repair interlaminar delamination, or like what you said, debris impact um, on on the whole in real in the real real life? I mean, okay, this, this is very important questions too. Okay. Uh, very I, I, tough I, I questions. Too. Remember the question, okay? The first one is um, of the fiber and matrix definitely would affect the repair. Okay, we gotta make sure that. Uh, the matrix basically we can when the time you do the repair okay the, the chemical bonding between the adhesive and the base rest uh, matrix have to be good otherwise that would be a poor bonding but I, I do see not sometimes it's not because not the problem of the fiber and matrix because you know what type of matrix to be used it's very common okay it's possible but the orientation of fiber is very important yep yeah because uh you got damaged, you have to repair it. You want the patch to take up all the load. Mm. Then the orientation of your patch is very important. How you can design the patch that can take up the load because of the damage, the, lo the local locations. Yeah. And the secondly is a, when you design a patch, the stress basically will distribute. You yeah. also have to make sure that it won't induce, introduce an other high stress zone. <laughs> yeah, I got an experience when I repair the train, okay, the train that got trouble, okay, and do the repair. We find out that after you repair, this song is very nice, but the other song got trouble because the stress go to another area. And then the second question is talking about the... Um, Interlaminar delaminar. Uh, uh, <laughs> nicer, okay, concrete is easy, you can inject the resin, what, what, what we call it, gouging. But for the composite, okay, it, that is the reason why I already mentioned about when they got interlaminar shear crack. The most important is that you have to find out where's the crack tree. And that is the most difficult, okay? You can cut a hole, but the cracking is outside the hole, then you've got trouble. Yeah. So once the interlaminar cracking happened, normally we have to cut that area and replace the patch on the surface. And, and this is the only way to do it because, it got, because interlaminar shear crack, you can't inject, okay, like you put a needle, but you inject the resin in, you can't do it. So the only way is to cut the sessions entirely, okay, making sure the crack tip is already inside that region and then put the patch. Yeah, and and, and, and you have to make sure that the repair is uh, able to take the whole load, like what you earlier said. Um, that's um, that's uh, one of the projects I would like to initiate is uh, uh, using composite simulations, the final elements to do the different scenario. And then say the option A, B, C, D, uh, depend, a, uh, set A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, if this repair like this, what it is just for? That is very important. Are you on me, right? I just like to always end off on a on a sort of a future forward looking question. Um, so we've got this question. You know, in your opinion, um, what are the areas that has the most opportunities? to expand on for the younger viewers that are attending, you know, what the, 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 the opportunities and what are the um, uh, key areas that you think uh, have a lot of potential to look into? 
Okay, uh, I still focus on aircraft repair first, okay? Because uh, otherwise, short composite is too many things, okay? Number one is NDT technology for the composite repair. Number two would be going to the repair scheme. That is, a, we, we, we do see this repair, how we can determine the design a new repair scheme on the surface, the surface patch, okay? Uh, to making sure that the, the bonding is strong the patch can take all the load, but that might be linked with the NDT as well because uh, you had to find out the, the crack chip. The, the another most uh, a popular area is using thermal plastics. This is a very, very hot area, but how we can use a thermal plastic that can replace thermal set is not easy, but that is a, a, a very good topic to mm. be explored. Mm. Yep. And I, I understand that Swimburn is, is looking into thermoset composites uh, more and more now. Uh, thermoplastics. Yeah, thermoplastics, sorry, thermoplastics. But not Swimburn, it's Airbus and yeah. Boring as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, on that note, I would like to really thank uh, Professor Alan Lau for the wonderful talk and, and the insights he's given us. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Vesna and the AV team for organizing this whole entire series and also Chris for allowing us to, to uh, he's, he's probably listening uh, or attending another, another seminar. So I would like to thank all the speakers that have, uh, that have contributed to this seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the audience and the attendants, uh, uh, the attendees of these uh, talks. Um, again, this talk will be uh, available after the event. Uh, Vesna will email you the link. So if you want to watch or share it with your colleagues, you can. Um, on that note, I would like to uh, 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 again thank Alan for his time and mm -hmm. I'll call this uh, seminar to a close. Thank you everybody for attending and thank stay safe much. and stay well. See ya. Yeah, thank you very much.